If you're a developer that's authorized to work in the United States, then you just got extremely lucky because overnight, nearly half of your competition just vanished. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, of course, I'm referencing the $100,000 fee for H-1B visas that was added, you know, about one month ago. Now, first, I want to talk about the situation, break down what this actually means, because a lot of people are getting this wrong. Then I want to talk about how you can take advantage of this opportunity, because I think it's going to be pretty short lived. And it's something that really has opened a big chance for developers that can currently work in the US. So what is this? First of all, what is the H-1B visa? Now, this is essentially a program that allowed foreign professionals to temporarily work in specialty occupations. This really just boils down to tech because almost all of these visas were given to like software engineering type roles. And every year there's 85,000 visas that can be won through a lottery system. That means that let's say you get a job with a US company, they can sponsor you for an H-1B visa where they essentially put you into a lottery and you have a small chance of being selected and being able to work in the US for a temporary amount of time. Now, these visas are supposed to be reserved for the top talent, right? You know, the best people in the world. But for a long time, they've been abused by tech companies to hire cheaper labor, mostly from third world countries, and to really abuse those employees and have them work just extremely gruesome hours and really hold this visa over their head because the visa is directly tied to their employment, which means companies almost always prefer to hire an H-1B visa employee because they can make them do pretty much anything that they want want at a lower pay because if they don't, they can simply let them go from the company and they're no longer allowed to stay in the United States. Now, that might sound crazy. There might be laws against it, but it happens. It's a big issue, especially in big tech. And overall, I think this is a good kind of step in the right direction. And I want to talk about what this $100,000 fee actually means. So first of all, this does not mean that there is going to be less visas. Again, there's only 85,000 visas. It's actually a small percentage of the amount of software engineering jobs in the United States and not all of these go to software engineer jobs. However, what this does mean is that far less companies now are going to sponsor the H-1B, which means far less people are going to be put into this lottery, which means far less people are going to apply to these jobs. Now, that in turn means that if you're a US developer, you now have a significantly higher chance of getting one of these jobs where previously this would be won by an H-1B candidate, right? And you have a significantly higher chance of actually having your resume seen. So there's actually a lot of factors factors and consequences that go into this. So let's kind of go through them step by step. So first, there's a $100,000 fee, right? This pretty much means that now all of these H-1B visas are purely reserved for big tech companies, right? Ones that can afford it. And they're actually probably only going to use it to hire people that they actually could not find in the United States. That means that again, for all of these entry level roles or even mid level roles where a lot of you are probably competing for, you're going to have a higher chance of getting those positions because you're not going to be edged out by hundreds of thousands of people that are trying to win this H-1B lottery. I have worked with a lot of developers and I know tons of them, particularly from India, as you can see here, over 70% of the current H-1B visa holders are Indian citizens that apply to every US job that exists in hopes of potentially winning this H-1B visa. Now, because so many companies are no longer going to sponsor this, they're instantly going to be filtering all of those candidates out. I also know a lot of these people now are simply looking to other countries like Canada, UAE. They're just not even going to try for the United States anymore, which means you now have honestly more than half of the people that are applying no longer applying. So you have a significantly higher chance of actually getting seen. Now, it also means that if you do get through this cycle and you're competing against someone who needs an H-1B visa, you intrinsically are $100,000 more valuable, right? Because it doesn't cost $100,000 to hire you. That also means you can stay for a long time and companies are going to prefer to hire you because of that fee associated with an H-1B candidate. So overall, this means that if you're applying right now, you should see a high response rate, more interviews, more offers, and ultimately more negotiating power, right? When you're more in demand, when you have that more leverage, you can negotiate higher salaries, you can compare the offers against each other, and you're in a position where you can actually choose the company that you want to work for. You're no longer desperate just to land any tech developer job. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't completely fix the job market in the United States, but it is a step in the right direction. And I've already seen that a lot of the students I'm working with inside of DevLaunch, which is a program I have to help developers land six-figure jobs, are getting significantly higher response rates if they are a US citizen. Now, I will say kind of the opposite is happening for those that need an H-1B visa. We're still working with them and we're able to help find them jobs in other countries and kind of using different strategies. However, for US employees, this is definitely a massive advantage. 
For example, we just had someone in our program, Eric, land a $100,000 per year job. We just had Nishal land a $220,000 per year job. And Yusuf land an 80K per year job at the entry level. And again, I've seen these response rates really skyrocket over the past month, and really things are moving in the right direction because of this H-1B visa kind of fee that's been added. And again, while there's not any less visas, just because of the volume of applications lowering, you now have a significantly higher chance of getting your resume into someone's hand, which is really the first step to get into that interview process to eventually get an offer, etc. Now, with that said, there's definitely still a lot of competition. It's not easy it's just easier than it's been in the past i want to give you a few kind of quick tips that you can implement that's going to give you a much stronger chance of actually getting called in for an interview and then how you can just kind of improve yourself a little bit to pass those types of interviews now first of all you need to make sure that you have an extremely consistent and professional social presence a lot of the developers that i work with have no linkedin or they have something that's completely different on linkedin than they do on their resume you need to be consistent you need to have a story, you need to have a personal brand, and you really need to niche down. You can't be a general software developer in today's market, you need to be someone who's an expert in a particular field. You need to be a Python expert, or a front-end expert, or a back-end expert. You need to pick one area and present yourself in that light so that you can tell a better story, and again, you can be more consistent. Now, of course, you need a solid resume, that goes without saying, but you need to make sure, again, that's consistent with your LinkedIn, because a lot of times now, actually recruiters will reach out to candidates on LinkedIn. They'll check that first before they bring someone in, and if what you have doesn't match, that's just an immediate red flag. Now, if you do get called in for an interview, you need to make sure that while you're prepared for the technical side of things, you also are prepared for the behavioral. That's usually the first step. You have a recruiting screening call. You have maybe 15, 20 minutes to tell your story. If you haven't practiced for that, it can be something that's pretty difficult to get by. So make sure you understand the company mission and vision. You know your elevator pitch. You can tell quick stories to explain your experience and you can just stay engaged in the conversation and keep it like a conversation, not this kind of battle of an interview where you're getting asked a question, give an answer, question, answer. That's not what the interview should be like. Now look, if you want help with this exact process and you want to take advantage of this opportunity which again i'm not sure is going to be around forever and you want to work with ex google ex microsoft and ex amazon engineers then i've left a link to my page in the description down below you can click it and there's a video there that will explain exactly how we help you do this and how we've helped do this with tons of other students especially now with this new h1b situation Anyways, that's my take on this, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And a reminder, if you want a video on what to do if you need an H-1B visa, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to do that in the future.